close. How desolate does downtown need to be before we wake up and say, okay, enough is enough. Only on Como there is frustration, even outrage, because a repeat offender accused of stealing from the downtown Target store 22 times is still on the streets. Investigators say John Lomack, who is homeless and has an extensive criminal background, was seen on surveillance video stealing a giant television from the store and fighting with security. In this Operation Crime and Justice report, Tammy Mutas is asking why the repeat offender was released and has reaction from business owners tonight. Tammy? Mary, you know, the audacity in this case is just unbelievable. John Lomack was banned from Target because of shoplifting there so much, and yet he's out here somewhere. And many business owners are saying they feel under siege because of offenders like him. No, I'm not. I didn't steal nothing, man. This was the moment John Lomack was banned from Target after shoplifting there 21 times in three months. Yeah, 21. You see him on police body cam video being ordered not to trespass again for a year or he'd face felony burglary. Man, quit talking to me, I'll tell you. I don't want to listen. I don't want to talk to you, bro. Talk anyway. I don't want to talk to you, bro. But the trespass order didn't stop the 56-year-old. Two months later, on December 22nd, an emboldened Lomack is back, this time lurking around the 70-inch TVs before finally snatching one. And that's a perfect example of what we're living with right now. When several security guards confront Lomack, it's a tug of war. He even shoves one of them and stumbles his way out of the door, dragging the massive TV. Police call to the scene, finally bust Lomack. Oh my God, that is crazy. Next door, businesses say the Lomax of the world are ruining safety and security downtown. The Seattle Shirt Company has been repeatedly broken into in the last three months. How many stores do we need to close? How desolate does downtown need to be? before we wake up and say, okay, enough is enough. We need police, we need law and order, we need to prosecute. The vast majority of shoplifting cases are misdemeanors, which are prosecuted by the city attorney's office. What finally made this a felony case? SPD came to us and said, we need your help. People want felony behavior to be held accountable, and we're doing that. But they can get bumped up to felonies in the King County Prosecutor's Office if a weapon is used, or it's a large amount, or if it's a prolific offender like Lomac. We think he's a danger because of the circumstances of this case and his extensive history. King County prosecutors requested Lomac to be held on a $5,000 bail, noting warrants on his 32 prior cases going back to 1985. But a judge released him. We were very concerned, and we still are, that when a judge releases this person, that he's not going to come back to court. Judges have hard decisions every day. And so, you know, there are times where judges side with us and times where they don't. Meanwhile, businesses are still waiting for more police and accountability. We once had a beautiful city, and we've got to bring it back. Uh, Mary and Preston, that deputy showed up after someone called 911 to report a suspicious person parked right outside this O'Reilly Auto Store. Now, on the other side of this police tape, there's a van that you can see in profile. That was actually crashed into a patrol vehicle, but those two have since been separated. A closer look at that van also reveals that the passenger side window has been shot out. Now, as we go to some video, well, I can tell you that there are still a lot of questions as to how this all went down. We know it started just before 6 o'clock this evening. Uh, with that report of a suspicious person sitting in a vehicle. Within five minutes, though, of deputies arriving, shots rang out. Two men who worked nearby told us they heard at least four gunshots, and then a woman came inside their store to grab her kids and leave, wanting to get them to safety. We saw investigators going in and out of the O'Reilly Auto Store, but it's unclear if the man who was shot was ever inside. We do see that, uh, that at some point a patrol car got rammed and had its window uh, shot out, but the uh, van did. Witnesses say it was all pretty chaotic. It looked like they were chasing someone for a second there. We weren't really sure what was going on. Um, and then as soon as other officers arrived and stuff, they started like taking action and stuff. Um, don't really know what led up to it, but we did hear that uh, uh, the police vehicle was reversed into and there was gunshots into the car that reversed into them. That is through investigative work, also community information that led police to this apartment complex in Kent where one of those teens was arrested. 
Three of the five teenagers who escaped Echo Glen Children's Center Wednesday morning have now been arrested. 15-year-old Timothy Hernandez Ebanks, the only one identified so far because of a first-degree murder conviction, was arrested at a gas station in the early morning hours on Thursday. Also in Kent, another teenager was arrested Thursday afternoon at an apartment complex. And then a third arrest farther away in Kirkland. Around that time, detectives uh, with the King County Sheriff's Office serving in our North Precinct received information that a third uh, man, one of the uh, escapees there, may be located up near the Motel 6 in the Totem Lake area of Kirkland. They relocated up there, great support from the Kirkland Police Department, and uh, after just a very brief foot pursuit, he too was taken into custody without further incident. Now there are two of the unidentified teenage escapees from the juvenile detention center who are still on the run. We are going to ask uh, them to certainly look at their colleagues, look at those that they escaped with, and know that when you do the right thing, you comply and make good choices. We can get you into custody safely. King County Sheriff's officials asking for more community information and leaving a message to those who might know where these teens are. Do the right thing, call 911. Let's end this week with all five back in custody where they belong. Hi everyone, I'm Preston Phillips from Como News. Thanks for checking out the Como YouTube channel. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for more news from the Seattle area and Western Washington. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss our YouTube updates.